Welcome to the world of Dark Souls, where death is not the end, but a new beginning. Where every challenge is a test of your skill and will. Where every victory is a reward for your perseverance and courage. Hello, it's everybody's least favorite yearly poster here. After more than 10 months, I've returned to do a video on Dark Souls. I know, unique concept, right? But don't worry, I have literally nothing to say that hasn't already been said a thousand and one times on the internet before. Just like in any game with a character creation menu, of course your first goal in Dark Souls is to create the most horrid monstrosity known to man using the given sliders. Today I will be playing as some kind of retarded fish man named Shithead III. I roleplay so hard for you guys that I lost at least 10 IQ score during my 10 hour long playthrough, so if you think I deserve it for putting my mental fortitude on the line, drop a like down below harder than my dad dropped me on my head when I was a baby. You underestimate my power! Get good, scrub. You just got pwned MLG style the Aki way. Believe it or not guys, we just beat the hardest part of Dark Souls 1. It's gonna be smooth sailing from here, right? Ah, uh, we're finally in Lordran. Now time to jump this dumbass or some free souls. Oh nigga don't hate me cause I'm beautiful nigga. Maybe you got rid of that old yee yee ass haircut you got, you get some bitches on your dick. Who's the lousy rat now, punk? Yeah, that's right, motherfucker. Now never talk to me or my fish man ever again. Now this is where the real Dark Souls begin. Now that we're in Lordran, the game will become much more difficult. I think it's time for a training montage. Now, some people will tell you that Dark Souls is one of the most difficult action-adventure RPG games ever made, but once you sit down and actually play the game, you will realize that at heart, Dark Souls 1 is just another collect-a-thon, kinda like Banjo-Kazooie or Ratchet & Clank, because seriously, after your first playthrough, you'll end up spending more than half the game running from place to place to grab all the items you need for your build. So this guy right here is pretty important. He's the first merchant you meet in Dark Souls, and he sells some items that you can't get anywhere else in the game. Oops. Hey, cool, anime sword. Alright, and now it's time for the first boss we meet in Lordran. Ooh, this one's a doozy. It's the Taurus Demon, but also known as the Axe-Wielding Colossus, or the Horned Behemoth. He will descend upon you a thousand waves of his glorious axe into your skull. He will strike you down where you stand without a second thought. He will end your existence faster than you can comprehend that you were even alive. This wretched abomination will wipe the floor with you 15 times over before you even get a single hit. This is by far the hardest boss in Dark Souls, by far the hardest boss in any game ever made. A victory over this boss is something that only true gamers could possibly attain. Beating this boss requires- Oh hey, he's dead. Next. So this fight's not all that hard, all you have to do is kill Dumb before Dumber comes around. 
And even if you didn't stop by Andre to upgrade your weapon or stop anywhere to level up your character, you should be fine. These freaks don't really work well together. All they do is kind of do completely separate things while you beat the shit out of one of them. The second weirdo spawns in at half health anyway, so he's not going to be that big of a deal when he comes in. A cool little trend that starts in this boss fight is that you can chop off a lot of bosses and enemies' tails to get a special weapon from them. A lot of the time this will take away a certain amount of their attacks too, and some of those attacks are really difficult to dodge. I didn't end up cutting this guy's tail off because they can be surprisingly difficult to hit sometimes. So just imagine I did, I wasn't going to use the weapon anyways, it's pretty bad. Also throughout this gameplay you might see me summon some guy named Solaire and that is because he gives you a special item that I actually don't end up using every time he is part of a fight that you're in. Basically, if you use summons, you're a bitch, unless you're trying to upgrade the Sunlight Covenant to get that one miracle that's really difficult to get. This is one of the easiest bosses in the game if you have a ranged build. If you do not have a ranged build, get a high magic defense shield, and be prepared to watch the hours turn into days, turn into weeks, turn into months as you wait for this bitch to finally land. At least she's an optional boss, and even the thing she drops isn't very useful. Barely any souls and a divine ember, which is one of the worst upgrade paths in the game. I'm already bored of watching this. Next, if you play any PvE games, or even any PvP games, Games, you've grown an everlasting hatred towards dogs. Ever since I played Modern Warfare 2 for the first time, I've been waking up in cold sweats screaming in the middle of the night about how the dogs are coming to get me. These absolutely horrible enemies make any segment of any game worse by just being there. And in Dark Souls 1, they're even worse if that's possible. They can proc bleed, which basically means if you're a noob and you level vitality like a nerd, your health bar will still melt away at the sight of any of these dogs. And not only that, but in this hellish arena, there's so many gank squads of screeching miscreants everywhere you look. You'd swear this was Vietnam with how many people were coming out of nowhere killing you. Not only that, but they can parry and backstab you, making this one of the most annoying places in the entire game. Not to discount the boss of this area, which is the Capra Demon, one of the easiest bosses in the game if you take away the two shithead dogs that kill more people than the boss itself. This is why astute viewers saw me pick up the wolf ring, because if you have that, then that makes the dogs in this boss fight basically do nothing. If they can't stagger you, then they probably can't hit you enough times to proc bleed or kill you, so it's basically over for them. And then once the dogs are gone, the boss is so easy, because even in his small room that he tries to abuse you in, he basically can't do anything because he's stuck in there with you. This bonehead infuriated me so much on my first playthrough that I'm not even going to give this guy a boss card like I have been. If you know what to do, he's one of the easiest bosses in the game. If you don't know what to do, you'll be slouched in a corner crying in the first 30 minutes of this deplorable boss fight. Hey gamers, welcome back to another Dark Souls tutorial video. Today I'll be showing you how to beat the Gaping Dragon. This method always works for me, and assuming that this method doesn't get patched in the next update, guys, please try this out yourself. It makes this fight so much easier. So let's get started. The basis of this strategy is that you're going to want to deplete the Gaping Dragon's health bar before the Gaping Dragon depletes your health bar. This enemy will basically never attack you, and all you have to be scared of is the ground. Grabs. Now I do get hit one or two times in this boss fight guys and I'm sorry about that because I don't know how the fuck that possibly happened. You basically never will get hit by this boss. Now there are two hard parts about this boss fight. Trying to get the stupid tail hitboxes to line up with your weapon will make you want to personally beat the shit out of Miyazaki. Now obviously the hardest part about dealing with this boss fight isn't the gaping dragon itself but it's actually surviving the old age that you are going to attain from having to fight this boss for hours and hours because you didn't upgrade your weapon and now you have to slice them 45 times because they have the biggest health bar in the entire game. Merry Christmas, fuck you. Alright gamers, now we go on to Blight Town, which is, I would say, most people's favorite part of Dark Souls 1, and that's just because of the atmosphere and the fact that you get poisoned every 5 seconds. The fact that there's uh, douchebags blowing dart guns at you constantly that will afflict you with toxic, which is basically poison, but like twice as fast and can stack with poison. Also, your movement speed is like half, which I just thank the developers so much for because you get to like 
experience the entire place just so much more vividly as you slowly walk through the sludge. Oh, and also, I almost forgot, I almost forgot. Um, on the PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360, which were the original consoles that this game came out on, this whole area would reduce your console to a very warm sort of uh, paperweight experience and this would just cause like the game to run at three to four fps the entire time so if you thought that the reduced movement speed wasn't like allowing you to experience it all enough you should play it on the original version like the developers intended uh where you would actually play the entire segment in slow motion while your character is being slowed down like half his speed oh and i also forgot to mention silly me most of the builds in this game have at least one or two items that you need to find in the special rafters area that is almost impossible to navigate if you're a normal person. Now despite how facetious I was being earlier, Quaylag is one of the best fights in Dark Souls 1. She's tougher than she looks, she's smart, she's funny, and she's got some big, round personalities. So what's not to love? All jokes aside though, this is a really fun fight. The biggest issue with this fight is that if you stand to the left or right of the spider's head, none of her attacks can hit you except the AoE. But other than that, if you don't abuse that fact, then you're gonna have a fun time fighting this boss. I'm not giving Endless Cum a title card. He's one of two bosses that have a lore ending, which basically means that it would take longer to make that a title card than it would to just beat the boss again. The other lore ending is more interesting than this one. This one, all you have to do is run from one end of the arena to the other end of the arena, and then he falls over and dies. The fight is really boring and stupid, kind of like the Moonlight Butterfly, if you don't have a ranged build. If you have a ranged build, it's really easy. Other than that, there's literally nothing interesting to say about this boss. Next. Funny how they put Endless Cum and Spider Mommy right next to each other, though. Welcome to Sen's Funhouse. Noobs hate this area. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, I did try to play this portion of the game just to show you how bad it could be, but after dying three times I had enough of this shit and decided that I'm gonna use a shield and run through it like I usually do. This is another segment of this game where you can basically just walk through it if you know what you're doing or if you don't know what you're doing you're gonna have to sit here for 30 hours and cry. It's not like it matters anyways though, Sen's Fortress doesn't really have anything for my build, unless you're playing a bitch ass mage it won't have anything for your build either. So have fun stealing Solaire's shield and running through this place. Sadly, this playthroughs, Solaire has to live for the Sunlight Covenant. Alright, next is the Iron Golem. He has a lore death where if you hit him in the leg a few times, he'll fall over and die. But fighting him normally is alright too. The only thing you really have to watch out for are his janky grab attacks that'll grab you from behind him, and he'll throw you right off a ledge too. Ah, uh, what a beautiful day. I really hope no abominations beyond my wildest imagination come over here to kidnap me. Now this is where the real Dark Souls begin. Now that we're in An Orlando, the game will become much more difficult. Now name a better way to start this than running around and stealing all the items from these dumbasses.
Now this boss does look pretty difficult, and I would forgive you for looking up a guide on how to do this, but trust me, they're all inaccurate. You see, rather than saying limp dick nerd shit like try to separate the bosses, what you should be doing is maxing out your damage with power within and beating the shit out of the little guy until he falls over and dies. After that, the big guy's a cakewalk, so there you go. That's how you beat this boss. Nah, no way man, no way I'm going back in the clink. I was threatened, I swear. She deserved it too. She got what was coming to her if you ask me. Sorry guys, last thing I remember I just beat Ornstein and Smell. I don't know how I got here, but it looks like I beat a few bosses, so let's go. Welcome to another abomination of a level in Dark Souls 1. Here's the Tomb of the Giants. Just in case your day wasn't bad enough, there's only two items in here that'll actually let you see a fucking thing. One of those items is stuffed at the end of this area, and the other one's tucked away in a corner of one of the other worst segments of the game. Again, if you know where you're going, this isn't that big of a deal, but on your first playthrough you'll want to shoot yourself.
this Nido guy is going to scream, he's going to shout, and he's going to let it all out. The trick with this fight is to downgrade the occult club that you find in Ann Arlando to a divine club. This will perma kill the skeletons. I don't know why, but I thought miracles would do the same thing, and well, they don't. I feel like the miracles should work, but whatever, the skeletons aren't that big of a deal anyways. Again, another thing that makes this boss easy is if you just have a lot of resistances. The only things that will really kill you is how he inflicts you with toxic with almost every attack that he makes, and how the skeletons inflict bleed like a motherfucker. Definitely not the best or worst boss fight in Dark Souls 1. Probably the most forgettable out of all of the Lord's Souls if you ask me. Welcome to the Abyss. This is where you meet the Four Kings. It's pretty funny how they name him that, because you'll probably only ever meet three of the four kings, but somehow up to five can spawn, making this name really strange. This boss fight is really boring and a lot of people hate it. It forces you to unequip one of your rings and is generally an extremely difficult boss fight, like I would know because I've never fought this guy without Havel's armor. That completely trivializes this boss. You literally can have all tank through every single one of his moves, including his grab attack, like it never happened, and just spam Estus and Humanities. So I really hope you like turning your brain off and pressing the R1 button as fast as you can. At least you can fight this boss one-handed so you can stroke it crazy style while you beat these nerds to death. If you're an idiot like me and you forgot to equip the Curse Bite Ring, absolutely refuse to level Vitality or Endurance, and always insist on fast rolling, then this is the hardest boss in the entire game. He's incredibly easy for normal people, but that only applies to people who have enough health to survive a single one of his attacks. With most of his damage also dealing Curse, which semi-permanently phantom taxes your health bar in half, you're bound to be even more of a fleshlight for this oversized crystalline lizard's fury. And that's not even to mention that he has one of the worst boss runbacks in the entire series. Just on your way there, you can slip off crystals, be beaten to death by the rock, or get totally clammed on, just to be trolled by one of his many AoE attacks. He must think you're a Japanese schoolgirl because he loves to rape you with his tentacles more than he loves ruining your day as a glass cannon build. It's time to beat this fucker. Okay, so he wasn't actually that hard, but he's still really annoying. This is by far the worst boss fight in the game. This little bug lady who lives in her mechazoid of a tree decides to bitch slap you off the face of the planet and cast pyromancies at you like a whore. Her run back is shit too, there's not even many dangers, it's just long and boring. If you don't cheat like me, you're gonna have to do it a million times because she insists on knocking you into bottomless pits. Gravity truly is the real final boss of any from soft game. So I have a confession, I really suck at Gwyn. I plan on doing a review for the DLC sometime anyways, so I'm gonna leave things unfinished for now. While this boss is one of the easiest in the game, my low health, non-existent poise, and generally low level is catching up to me. I think this boss fight will be out of my reach until I level up a bit after the DLC. So stick with this for the next video where I talk about the DLC.